today I'm going to be putting this takedown bow together. Uh, get the holes drilled out for the limbs. Get the holes drilled out for the for the riser. Get me some uh, ribbit nuts. Get me some ribbit and set it in there, hidden. We'll get this thing put together and see if we can't get it get it tethered and uh, go from there. So now that I've got all those those rivet hidden those rivet nuts, now that I got those rivet nuts set in here, I wanna go ahead and give this a assembly and see how it's gonna fit together. Now I got these marked, or I got one of them marked for bottom. So take Start putting it together. Now since I've got this put together, I want to, while I've got it together, I want to go ahead and get my notches from my string, both sides here, and then I'll, I'll put it, I'll tiller it, make sure the limbs See what, what more needs to come out of the limbs. To, let's see if they're going to bend, bend even. And uh, more likely, I'll have to thin the limbs out just a little bit. <laughs> Alright, so now I've got the notches in there. And I've got my piece of test string here. And I'm going to start tillering this bow to see which where I need to take out of it on the limbs. I, need, I want to get them good and even. I don't want to go too far the first time. I want to see where it needs to be taken out. I see this one's bending more than this one. 
So I need to take it, take some more out of this one. Get it to even up with that one. The way I'll take that out is I'll use my file and I'll come, come along just the inside of the bow, not on the front. Let me show you. This is, this is the back. This is where you put the back in at, on the front of the bow. I won't take it out on the inside of it, on the inside part of the limbs. So I don't want to take it off here and, and it possibly cause it to splinter and have one raise and break. Which I'll come back after a while and I'm going to put some kind of backing on the front of it just to snap up. Tiller it again. looking about even now. While I've got it there, I'm going to go ahead and put it on down to the draw. And I'll put that over just in case it was to break and it don't stab me in the belly. Finishing. I'll have to take and clean this all back up. I'm going to put me some backing on here and then put the finish on it. <laughs> okay, so, so now I'm ready to, to start the finish on this. I've been sanding on it already and uh, now I want to try to stain it. And what I'm going to stain it with is going to be my quench oil that I quench my knife blades in. We did the same thing with the limbs. On, on this tuck down riser, I did go ahead and decide to do an inlay with the, the epoxy handle material that I'd made up. Now that is uh, that's epoxy resin with the orange dye with walnut shavings inside of it. It's not looking real good right now, but I'll get the sanding on it and get this cleaned up. So what I'm fixing to do now is I'm going to put some backing on these limbs and I'm going to be using something that just creeps me out. I just, I don't know why, because it don't bother me that bad. Hell, I'm, I'm more scared of spiders than I am snakes, but with that being said, I don't care nothing about cotton mouths. But that's what I'm going to be using is cotton mouth snake skin to back these limbs with. There's a little something to know about them old cotton mouths. If, if a person decides they want to go get some cotton mouths and use for backing for the bows or anything else, the cotton mouth is, a, is an aggressive snake. They're very, they're territorial. Uh, they're, they're, one of the very few snakes that that if you get close to them they're going to come after you instead of running away from you 
Yeah. A lot of people here, you know, a lot, a lot of times you might hear that uh, you see a snake, you know, just stand still and it won't bother you. It's not so much the case with cottonmouth because cottonmouth has got a temper. They're, they're mean. And they don't like, they don't like it when somebody comes into their territory and they'll, they'll show sure let you know it real quick because they'll come after you. They're not going to run, run away from you or lay there and wait for you to pass on. They're going to come and let you know, let you know to move it, move and go on. Now, also, uh, the last time that uh, I used this cottonmouth snake skin to back a bow with, I guess the, you know, because they do start stinking, and it does, you do start smelling old cottonmouth smell. And I've got a big old king snake out here running around, keeping the copperheads and everything away. But I guess that he picks up on the odor of this this cottonmouth because last time I was working with it he came in here looking and I like to tripped over him I come walking out the building went into the driveway and I like to tripped over him got him all wrapped up in my legs and he's a big old king snake he's he's six six seven feet long and he leaves the trail whenever he takes off through the grass so I'm gonna start I'll have to be watching out for him make sure I don't trip over him this time Alright, it's time to get this unwrapped now. Let's see just how many wrinkles I got in it or, and how bad they are. So far, the wrinkles don't look too bad in that one. Now it's time to you see these scales. It's time to get those off of there because if we don't take them off, they're gonna end up popping and flying off anyways. So time to get descale it. Now normally, normally I would use like uh, some masking type or something, but somebody ran off with it and I can't find it. So I'm using this packing tape. And so you can just put it on there, stick that tape on and just pull it and it pulls them scales right off. You might have to go over a couple places a few times. But that is about the easiest way to get them scales off. Now, as you can see, once you start getting the scales off, it really starts bringing the color out. Now I've already descaled the other one. I see I did get some wrinkles in that one. I may, may end up, I may end up taking and peeling that up and straightening them wrinkles out. <laughs> There's a reason. There, there's reason why I put that snake skin on here for backing. It's because I did make this out of a, it's a single piece of wood made out of hickory. And uh, on this, this side here where I put the backing on, I did do a lot of file work and a lot of sanding on it. And it made it, made it a flat limb. Where normally like making a self bow or something when you take the bark off you don't you try not to go as much into the sapwood as you can try, try to go into it as least as you can 
Well, I, I went into the sap wood on this one, so it needed something for backing to help support it and help keep it from wanting to splinter out when you pull it back. And snake skin is what I had available. Now, sometimes I do, I put a leather backing on it. And then I also rawhide. And if you really, really wanna, want something to stiffen up the poundage on your bow, rawhide is the way to go. Cause it will, it'll, it'll add quite a bit of pounds, quite a few pounds to your draw on your bow. That's why I put the snakes kit on here. It's a, more for protection than for looks. But honestly, I think it does look good. Look at that. I, I hope you like these videos. But uh, I've been saying for a while that I would I'd probably do a video on making a bow, and uh, I've got, I had that itch to make a bow, and I've scratched it, and now it's time to move on to something else, and uh, if, uh, if you haven't did it yet, consider subscribing to the channel, liking it, sharing it, and we'll see you next time.